Today, we build a 3D printer enclosure. Building a 3D printer enclosure is definitely nothing new. Even the builds out of these IKEA lac tables, they've been done many times. But recently, Prusa Research released a version that they came up with. Their version of this build introduces a lot of cool features, including spool holders, hinges for the doors, and magnetic latches. They even came up with parts that will help you integrate your Mark II or Mark III into the design. Definitely go check out Prusa's video on this enclosure. You can get to it up here. All the information on that build and the parts that I used will be in the description below. Now let's check out all the parts we need and get this thing built. Here's all the printed parts you'll need. Prusa's done a pretty nice job at batching these all up into their own STL files, so there's just a couple of groups that you have to print out. And conveniently, they all fit on the Prusa bed. So you'll have the set of bottom corners. You'll have 10 cable clips. These will be on their own plate. The door handle and catch are on their own plate. You'll have a spool holder plate. That's all this stuff. I'm actually going to print out three of these because I'm going to put three complete spool holders on the top of the enclosure. You have the plate that holds the PSU when you put it underneath the enclosure. You have a plate with the top corners and the hinges on it. And you'll also need some sort of reinforcement for your printer because we will be taking the PSU off. So whether you're going to put an MK2 or an MK3, you'll need one of those parts. I'm going to put the MK2 on there, so I'll use this one. And you'll also need to print a piece that redirects the heat bed wires. I printed this one out of PETG because it might have the chance of getting hot. It just redirects the wires up about 45 degrees so they don't clip the back of the enclosure. And just a side tip, since all these pieces are in STL files bunched together, if you needed to just print one of these parts out in Slick 3R, you can just come up here and hit split. That will split them all out into individual files, and you can remove the ones that you don't want to print. Easy enough. Here's all the non-printed parts I'll be using. I'm going to put a thermometer inside so I know what temperature the enclosure is. You'll need some screws for the legs. I'm using number 12 by 2 inch screws. And screws for everything else will be number 10 by 3 quarter. The BOM calls for number 12 screws or 6 millimeter screws, but I found those are too big. 10 should work just fine. A smoke detector inside the enclosure is always handy to have. I'm going to put this LED strip inside. This is 12 volt LED strip, and I'm just going to use a separate power adapter rather than trying to mess with hooking it up to my PSU. And then you're going to need some plexiglass. You're going to need five sheets in total. So you'll have three 440 by 440 millimeter sheets, three millimeters thick. And then you'll have another 440 sheet that's split down the center for the doors. So it's 440 by 220, three millimeters thick. And probably the hardest part to source are these four magnets you need for the door latches. These are 20 millimeter by six millimeter by two millimeter. Link in the description. And last but not least, you'll need at least two IKEA lac tables. These are very inexpensive tables that you can order from IKEA right off the internet, or you can go to your local store. If you want to build your enclosure even taller, you can just add another table underneath. So before we start the build, just a quick tip on plexiglass. Plexi can be kind of hard to work with, and it's kind of expensive. But if you're in the US, I found this company called Tap Plastics. They will cut the sheets down to whatever size you want, and then they'll ship them to you. And even with the shipping, it's pretty reasonably priced. So if you don't want to mess with your own sheets and cutting them down, go ahead and check them out. Now we can start to build the top of the enclosure. So we'll start by unpacking our first table. We'll call this the front and this the back. The only difference is this side will have hinges. So now we've got our four top corner pieces and our two hinges. The thinner one of the hinge is the one that goes at the top. So we'll use some of our two inch screws and the holes that are already pre-drilled for the legs by IKEA to attach these corners. These front two are going to be the hinge pieces and the back two, no hinges. So we'll go ahead and screw those down. Now that we know where the front and the back is, we need to plan out where the spool holders are going to go. They actually have a plastic grommet that runs through the table, so we have to plan out where to drill those holes. So from the front of the table, we'll mark out 250 millimeters. And from the left of the table, we'll do 145 millimeters. This will be where the first grommet goes. And from that hole, it'll be 130. That'll be where the next one goes. And then from that hole, it'll be another 130. 
Now the grommets for the filament are around nine millimeters, but I'm gonna use a 3 8 drill bit and they should work just fine. So now I'll go ahead and drill those three holes. Holes are drilled. Now the grommets will go from the top of the table inward. We'll put a little super glue on the grommets. Then we can slide the grommets in from the top. And now the grommets are in. It does give the table a nice touch. So now that we know the path that the filament's gonna take, we can avoid that path when we're mounting our lights and our smoke detector. So let's go ahead and put some lights on the front. I've got the adhesive back LEDs. I bought a lot of extra, but I want a lot of light in my enclosure. So I'm just gonna stick quite a few of these on here. I'll just let the cord hang down in the back and then I can run it to my DC adapter later. Now I've got four sections of the LED strip stuck onto the top of the enclosure. Now I can just link them together with a couple of little pieces of wire. Now all my LED strips have been soldered up. Let's plug it in and give it a test. That is one bright enclosure. Now we can add our smoke detector. Let's select a good spot for that. I think we'll just put it here in the back. These tables are really thin. You'll probably have to use the anchors that came with your smoke detector. We'll put the battery in, test it. Ouch. Our anchors are on. Now we can mount the plate. Plate's on nice and snug. Now we can slide our detector back on. And now we're safe. Now we can attach the legs to the top of the table. They're just gonna set in your holder right like that and you're gonna use your three quarter inch screws. And now all four legs are on. Now that the four legs are on, it's time to take the plastic off our plastic sheet. And now your plastic should slide right into the grooves in the top printed parts. So they should slide in just like this. Then you can set the half pieces into the door hinges. Then these printed parts will fit on the bottom of the legs of the top part of the enclosure to help hold the plexi in place. This is where you'll use the taller hinge piece. So we'll just slide these on the plexi. Don't forget to slide your hinges in while you're building. And then our last corner piece will be the piece that allows the wires to run through the bottom of the enclosure. It has a little valley in it. We'll stick it over here. Now I'll adjust the 3D printed parts on the plexi to make sure everything's nice and square. And then I'll attach these printed parts with some two inch screws. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like an enclosure. We're almost done with the top table. All we have to do now is put the spool holders on the other side of this table. So there'll be three spool holders on the top of this one and they just mount right here with one screw. You can use your three quarter inch screw on these. They'll fit just like that. Now I'll do the other two. Now your spool holders are all on somewhat evenly. Now you can take the spool bearing pieces that they give you and you can put them together like so. And then when you're ready to mount your spools, they'll just sit right like that. Now we can build the door latch pieces. These two attach to the plexiglass and this one will screw down to the other table. But we need to glue the magnets in to both of these pieces. So two on that one and one on each of these. Make sure you have your magnets turn the right direction before you glue them down. You want the magnets to stick to each other. Now the magnets have been glued in. We can just slide these two on the plexiglass doors. And there's your door handle. Now the top table of the enclosure is done. We can set this one aside for now and we'll start working on the bottom table. We'll open up our next lack table. Now we have the top of the second table and these four printed pieces. These fit into the cups of the feet on the first table. These two with the rounded corners line up with the hinges so they'll go to the front two corners all the way in the corners. And then you have one that has the wire valley in it. The wire valley goes out the back. So it'll go in this corner over here. And then one that's just square. It'll go to the right top corner. Now we can screw all those down with some three quarter inch screws. Now for the top table mounts are screwed on. Now we can flip this over and we can attach the legs with the hardware that Ikea gave us. So the legs mount with this double sided screw and then you just use the leg as the tool to install it. So you just stick it in the leg, stick it in the hole, start twisting. Now that all four of the legs are attached, we can set this aside for a moment because now we need to prep the printer to go in this enclosure. The power supplies on these printers don't like heat very much and they do require a little bit of ventilation. So Prusa has designed some brackets that allow you to take your power supply and mount it underneath the enclosure. There's also some brackets that take the place of the power supply on the printer to maintain the frame's rigidity. I am going to unplug the 12 volt cables from the board that go to the power supply to install it. You might not have to do that when putting your printer inside your enclosure. 
So first I'll remove these two screws, then I'll remove these two screws. They're on the foot that's on the power cover behind the printer. Then we can just swing the power wires underneath the printer. Then you can put your stabilizer piece on. You can use the same hardware down here from behind the printer. And then for these two holes up here, you're going to need a couple of nuts. I recommend grabbing some M4 nylon lock nuts. And then the screws can go in from the front just like they did before. Now our bracket's installed in the back. And I've got the two screws back on the front. Now our power supply is loose, we can go back to working on the bottom table. So the best spot to put your power supply is on the back side of the table on the inside of the leg. So your wires will run over the top into that printed piece that has the valley in it. So it'll attach something like this. So we'll take our printed part and it's going to fit on the bottom of the power supply and then the whole thing will set on the leg right like that. So there's a screw here on the bottom and then a screw on the back of the printed part where we can attach this. So I'll mark where this part fits. I'll go ahead and mount the printed part from the back side with a 3 quarter inch screw. Make sure the power supply still fits. Looks good. And then I'll put in my bottom screw. I'm going to use one of my 2 inch screws for the bottom one. Now that piece is on and the power supply still slides in nice and snug. You'll want to run your cables to the inside of the leg, right like that. And then you can install the other printed part. The tab goes on the foot that's on the control box. So it'll go on just like that, and we'll use a 3 quarter inch screw. Now your power supply is on nice and snug, but it's still easy to remove, and it'll stay a lot cooler this way. Again, your wires are just going to be sandwiched in between the power supply and the leg, and then they can come up and run through this valley that's in the printed part to keep them safe. We also need to modify our heat bed plug cover a little bit. I printed out this 45 degree angle piece from AMK2 that should direct the wires up and clear the enclosure. So we'll remove this screw that's on the bottom of the heat bed that holds the cover on. We'll remove the zip ties and we'll replace it with the new cover. Again, this is PETG just in case it gets a little warm. The new plug cover's on. We'll add our zip tie back in there. That should be enough to angle the wires up and keep them out of the way. Now we need to mount our door latch that goes on top of the second table. It's just easiest to put your top enclosure piece on and then use the doors to line it up. Once you have the doors lined up where you want them, you can then just open one door at a time and screw it down with your 3 quarter inch screws. And now your door should be functional. Now I'm going to go ahead and build a third one of these tables because I'm going to stack the other two tables on top of it to make the enclosure a little taller and easier to work with. And our enclosure is pretty much done. Now all we have to do is find a spot to put the enclosure, get everything plugged in, maybe run a test calibration, load some filament, and then we're ready to start printing. So now it's all set up and it's looking pretty good. There were a few other things that I did to the enclosure that I didn't show in the video. I redid the power wires that run from the PSU to the printer, I added about four inches to each, so I just ran some new wire. And then on the bottom table, I put some L brackets on it to connect it to the middle table just for some added stability. I also changed up the spool holder a little bit so you can use narrower spools. Links to Thingiverse in the description below. Now why would you want to build an enclosure? Well, one, I think it makes the 3D printer look more finished, like it's an actual piece of furniture. But the main reason is so that you can print high temp plastics easier. This is an ABS test print without the enclosure. You can see it shrunk and cracked the model. This is an ABS print in the enclosure. The enclosure did reach about 30C during the print, but you don't get the cracks, and the finish is a lot smoother. Thanks again to Prusa for putting this design out there. It's a lot of fun to build, and it's pretty inexpensive. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.